Hi folks, welcome to the Atabino Park Finale Tour. We're standing here looking back at where we came into the park. And just to the left is a guest services function area, the accessibility services. And we'll take a look in there following this woman. And discover she's going where she's not supposed to be. Pretending she's a service agent, possibly because she can't find one. Uh, so here's where uh, accessibility challenge guests would come to get wheelchairs or mobility scooters. And on out into the park down the ramp. And this is the entry plaza. There's a restroom to the right and a little portico going behind the information center. Uh, to skirt it around the other side. And on this side, there is a large building where there would be zoo facilities and also the entry T-Rex Cafe on the upper story. Walking down the straight-in path, we come to the portion of the plaza that takes you up into the park proper. Blah, blah, park proper. I'll get those words eventually. Someday I'll even learn how to talk. So Crowney's standing on top of the arch, and Crowney is also over that doorway to the right where there would be an elevator for the accessibility challenge people. As we, as we turn to our left, you can see the, the fancy staircase to the upper level, but you also see our first animal enclosure. And this is a micro raptor exhibit. It doesn't say it on the signs. And I think somewhere in the savings, the actual micro raptors have uh, evaporated. Uh, <laughs> oh well. Uh, I wanted this to represent perhaps the first exhibit that's in the park. And uh, so not terribly fancy or anything. And I also wanted the micro raptors to be able to perch on the, the wire. So this path would be up, as you saw from that archway. Uh, to the future Triassic area, uh, a fairly arid area of the park, and it would continue on to connect you to the Jurassic portion of the park. So we're going to go back down and buy the uh, micro... Oh no, there are micro raptors in there. There was one clinging to the wire there. Good boy. So back to this uh, entry area and the stairs up to the secondary plaza uh, and you can see the arch to the Cretaceous area there on the right and as we take a look a little back and forth you see several paths and now you see the arch to the Jurassic area. We have another uh, small animal enclosure here, no names here. Uh, the second uh, mini exhibit animal has not been revealed while I'm cutting this. And just beyond this area, there is the entry circle to the genetics lab, which presumably would be a special uh, additional ticket for guests to take a tour through there. That probably won't have a game function for that, but it's in my head canon, so <laughs> uh, that's how my park runs. Uh, so let's go back past the mini exhibit and get ourselves onto the bridge to go to the Jurassic. Uh, apologies, as always, for the kind of clunky driving sometimes. Uh, still having issues to get it to behave. Uh, so, across the bridge, and you can see here this rocky area, which separates the bridge back down to the Triassic, and on to this stony arch. Yeah, somebody's being very noisy out there today. Um, and through this arch is the Jurassic area. We have a couple of uh, sister buildings to see the two animals that are slated to be in beta uh, for the Jurassic, Camarasaurus and Torvosaurus. Uh, the buildings are pretty much constructed the same way, which allows me to duplicate it in just a couple of small details. So we move inside at the lower level to look at the Camarasaurus exhibit. And the, the Jurassic was fairly arid uh, a lot of the time, seasonal weather. And uh, 
You'll notice something over on the left between the two pillars there that the cursor is pointing out. You need a lightning rod to keep it off our sauropods. They're very tall. Where are you going? That's for staff, dummy. I know it doesn't say it. Yeah, better. Okay, so um, these buildings have two levels of viewing. Let's see if we can get ourselves up to the upper level. Up, 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 up. And not go through the floor too much. Okay, get a little more guest view. And you can see that this is a little bit more on sauropod head level. Uh, but the view is pretty much the same. There's this little seating area over there to the right for people to wait or for kids who get too scared by the giant sauropod to get away from the window. Um, the central area here has a pond. I would love to have uh, water jets in that. Um, and a, a little sort of stage area in the center. Currently not connected because the guests keep trying to get into it. And this is the Torvosaurus view. Uh, currently being uh, occupied by a Tyrannosaur. Actually, I think it might be Tarbosaurus, since that one's a little bit smaller than Rex. Um, and a similar kind of environment. Tarbo gets that uh, fence you can see there, so you can get a little bit of rich enrichment by seeing the sauropod on the other side, even if you can't hunt it. Uh, <laughs> you know, we really don't want our exhibits eating each other. So, uh, time to head back to the uh, larger portion of the park, the Cretaceous area, and we will uh, cruise out the way we came in. Uh, it's a moderately long walk from the plaza to the Jurassic exhibits, and uh, perhaps if there are smaller Jurassic exhibits, they could fill in some of this space, but we don't have them yet. Uh, so, back over to the bridge, and up the ramp and in across to the plaza. See the building in front of us there? Uh, that houses the elevator to get the Accessibility Challenge guests up to this level. And the extension uh, beyond those bamboos, uh, the extension with its uh, rib-like uh, structure would have smaller guest facilities and there might be a plaza there. Uh, so there's the outlet for the uh, elevator. Um, if we uh, move into the Cretaceous area, we're going to take the Ceratopsian tour. So uh, when we reach the first fork in the path, we're going to go to the left toward an exhibit for Protoceratops. The question's there because we don't have Protoceratops confer confirmed for beta, even though it is confirmed for early access release. Uh, we are in dire need of uh, smaller animals to start the park with uh, things that can be acquired more cheaply and uh, kept more easily so our keepers can get experience. Um, so we go inside and there are a few stairs up to the first platform, uh, which looks out over the habitat. Uh, it has a dome because these animals are very much arid, very arid uh, environment animals. Uh, fossils are found in sand dunes, uh, entombed in them. Uh, so the tropical environment would be a problem for them. Uh, so we got to at least keep the rain off them. Uh, we come up to the upper platform where there is another uh, information screen and we can look out from a little higher level. Underneath this platform is a place for the animals to rest. Sort of a cavern for them to hide in. So we go out the other side and uh, take the path around. And we'll come to an er another area where you can look into the exhibit. All of these are effectively open air for the guests so they'll be able to hear the animals and smell them and all that kind of good stuff. The path forks here right now. To the right, it's going to go over to a path leading deeper into the park. And on the other side, it's going to go back around 
toward uh, the um, facilities area and that building keeps our guests from entering the facilities area. So we're going to come back around and get a glimpse of the rock work and glass on this side of the exhibit and then move on the Ceratopsian Trail and rejoin that first fork in the path um, which for people who just want to go deeper into the park. And the first exhibit we hit will finally be our first Cretaceous occupied exhibit. And as we come out from behind this tree, you will see, come out from behind the tree, you will see it's Nasudoceratops. We go up the stairs to the platform and we get to look at this little swampy enclosure for our little uh, bi-horned Ceratopsians and beyond it, that uh, plaza building. Ah, uh, yeah, they're making noise. Um, these guys seem to be very happy in this enclosure. Um, I hope they have enough room. Can't determine that yet, what they will uh, really want to have. Um, so, yes, noisy, noisy, noisy. So, uh, you know, you can watch these guys for some time. There's enough of them in here that they're not always doing the same animations. And uh, it's fun. It'll be better when they get some more stuff. But anyway, down the stairs. And this is that other path that connected to the path that came out of the Protoceratops exhibit. And you can see it goes deeper into the park from here. But we're going to move this way into the park, down to the Ceratopsian loop. You can see the sign for Pachyrhinosaurus on the right. And you can see a pad, which would again be guest facilities when we get some more to put in there. First stop is Styracosaurus. Now we're going to come down this path and go up onto the viewing platform and take a look into the exhibit. Where are they? Ah, ah. I see horns on the top of the ridge. That would be the, the horns on the back of his, his frill. But none of them are hanging out right here right now. You can see the care uh, building in the back. Uh, that's where they have their shelter and where the keepers can get into the exhibit. And they have a little pond here to draw them down for their drinks and uh, make them visible to guests on this platform. The platform is really kind of designed to sort of be a, a one-way path in the hopes that guests would be smart enough to figure that out. I can't force them to, to take it one way, but, you know, that's the idea. So back down to the ground level, I'm going to move along. You just saw a screen flash by because this area allows another view into the exhibit. And this time we have a Styracosaurus right here with us. Of course, it's the self-end of that Styracosaurus. So let's see if we can move to one side and get a better look at it. Yeah, there we go. Oh, and so he's got to lie down. Okay. Um, yeah, so, oh, that's right. When I have the, the screen set, yes, yes. I have the screen set to hide the interface. Uh, I cannot see what animal it is. I was trying to check if see if that was the male. Anyway, we move along here, and uh, there's a gate here, and, but um, this is intended to be a service area, so our guests are not going to be going in there. Pachyrhinosaurus has been confirmed for beta, but we don't have him yet. So uh, this is an implied exhibit. Uh, this is the area where the, ch the Accessibility Challenge guests can come in to get a view, uh, looking into the habitat. And people who can climb stairs can come around and take the stairs up to this pavilion. Yeah, ignore the floating sign. Um, on one side, you're pretty much looking at the undeveloped uh, park property. Uh, but if you turn around toward the habitat, You've got a, a view into the depths of this habitat. It shares a care building with the Styracosaurus. Uh, you can just get a glimpse of it 
uh, in the far distance. And there's an elevated area where I hope the pachyrhinos will uh, come to hang out. A couple of information screens. And let's head back down and uh, pick up that path that we didn't take. Um, but, oh, wait, there is one thing we missed. There's a little private viewing area for the Nasudoceratops. Oh, yeah, and we have some right here. So they're going to be loud for a little bit. I, and uh, this is a place where guests, at least adult guests, should be able to get a very close sense of the animals uh, because they will come right up to the fence. Uh, and that would put them, you know, about a, what, a meter away from the guests. Uh, it's not the biggest dinosaur, but uh, it's early in the park, so maybe they're not uh, too jaded yet. Yeah, you can hear him munching out there, doing his grazing animation. Yeah. Yeah. They're, uh, they're a noisy crew. So... I think it's time to uh, move along here, and we'll pick up the path that we've been avoiding. Uh, I probably need to put some signage in here uh, for the guests to know which way to go. We don't have good signage yet, but eventually I expect editable signs uh, will show up and, you know, something a little bit less blatant and then the big letter signs. This is the longest run without animals uh, in the park at this time. And uh, even then you might be able to uh, catch a glimpse of a Styracosaur if they wander up near that part of the exhibit. Uh, again, if there are some smaller animals uh, that are available to us in the future, we might, I might be able to add something along here to break this up. Um, but uh, we shall see. We shall see. So we're going to come up to a bridge here, which is our entry to Hadrosaur Country. You may have guessed that this park's, uh, a little bit of the theming for this park is that uh, keeping like animals together, uh, at least in the Cretaceous. Uh, so this bridge has uh, water uh, flowing underneath it and uh, split at the far end of the bridge, a uh, pile of rock, which would be a great place to put a hadrosaur uh, sculpture. And we're going to take the right-hand path over toward that building ahead. And it has a ramp and stairs to get on to this next uh, bridge. And we're going to make our way around onto it. And you can see a tower for an elevator for our uh, challenged guests and the rocky gorge to the right with the rope bridge over it and on the left which we have teleported out over uh, on on the left you can see we have a river running off uh, to that side so as we move uh, along the bridge you'll see there's a sort of area in front of the uh, elevator doors with a gate to another area. And we're going to go up the stairs. We'll come back to that other one. Thambiosaurus is our next animal on the tour. And we're going to go down to this viewing area. And we've got one right in here by. Um, I think uh, let's change our viewpoint angle a little bit. Because that's not normal positioning for this guy. Uh, I guess he's doing some deep grazing, considering that his, most of his head's in the ground. Must be uh, going for tubers. If you thought the Nasutos were loud, these guys, these guys are trumpeting a lot. Is that one going to do it? Nope, nope, not at this time. Um, but you can hear them from quite a ways away in the park. Uh, seating area, information sign, uh, screened area to keep kids from climbing into the garden there. And on the right, there's that rope bridge again. But there is no access to it from up here. 
So, I said we were going to go back to that little gateway. And uh, this is uh, an implied feature of the park. It is a special tour. Uh, the tour attendees can, will gather here till their guide takes them down the stairs here to this little area underneath the uh, walkway and a door. Now go through the door and we won't because it's also an implied passageway uh, but they will uh, move through the door and come out here uh, right next to the rope bridge and as we pivot around to the stairs you catch a little bit of glimpse of the door uh, that you'd come through and we go up the stairs uh, maneuver our way around uh, I find it a little hard to drive the camera in these tight spaces when you want to keep things lined up. Get ourselves lined up on the rope bridge, get our nerve up, and cross this thing. Yep, keep, stay to one side where you can hold the rope. Uh, and we come to a, a relatively natural looking area, and you can see a fence ahead, and that opens to the Pachyrhinosaurus exhibit. And the care building on the far side, there's a Styracosaurus group moving around in there. You can see right through the building to their exhibit. And on this side, of course, the Lambiosaurus. And again, got one hanging out right here. Um, I imagine occasionally our uh, tour guides would have a treat for these big fellas to entice them up to the... Uh, up to the fence for a close encounter for the guests. Uh, I see some foliage that needs attending to. And uh, right there, there's a locked cabinet where the tour guide can keep uh, visual aids to bring out when the guests are uh, in this area. So back across the bridge. Come on, back across the bridge. Oh, a little faster this time because it didn't fall down on us last time. So higher confidence that we won't die trying to cross it. And then back to the door and through the corridor to the entry area and back up. Loud boys. And then up the stairs and this time we're going to go the other way. And going down this walkway and we're going to be visiting another implied exhibit for a beta confirmed animal, Parasaurolophus. So we don't have an animal to see here. Um, so we've got a viewpoint here uh, with one angle into the exhibit. If we move down to this part of the pathway uh, we have a slightly different angle into the exhibit. And we go down the stairs. Down the stairs. Try to avoid running into the wall. And you can see Parasaur Lophus's name again with a little quiet viewing area. A um, couple of benches for guests to rest on. And you're quite close to the pond here. Um, so one would expect these dinosaurs to come up and hang out here. Um, if we go uh, along this path, say on the path, please, go along this path. Yes, those guys are making noise. You're also starting to hear the next animal on this tour. And uh, come down the path forks, back to the main path, and then into a similar uh, private viewing area, past a staff path. Uh, to the care facility for these next animals, which is Edmontosaurus. Uh, this is the Regalis species, and I think that's the male right present there with his dorky little crest. Um, and our guests can get uh, apparently quite close to these animals. The exhibit slopes down to the rocks that are in the foreground, so for the animals, it's quite
quite high barrier, uh, but for the guests, uh, they can see into the elevated portions of the uh, exhibit and see animals moving across the field of view. So, having taken a look there, we'll come out back to the main path, which continues through the tunnel underneath the elevated viewing platform. So we're going to make our way up the stairs and into this elevated viewing section. Uh, come up to the glass and it gives you a good view into the depth of this exhibit. Oh, there's a hadrosaur getting up. That's one of the girls. And uh, the animals can actually get quite close to this position so if the timing's right uh, you can see one pretty close and you'll be if, particularly if it rears up you'll be on hadrosaur high level broadcast yes no there we go deep bellows from our flat-headed hadrosaurs um, so there are information screens in here and uh, seats for guests to rest or just to hang out to watch the hadrosaurs. Uh, the deep river and down the stairs and on to the next portion of the park. Hell Creek. Uh, this is not finished. Cross a little creek to get there. I don't know if it's Hell Creek or not, but it implies that it might be. Um, it is, a, Hell Creek, of course, is the name of the formation where the first Tyrannosaurus was found. And uh, it's right at the end of the Cretaceous. So this is kind of the end of the dinosaurs here. You can see Tyrannosaurus exhibit is over there to the left. And spinning to the right, the path loops around. And beyond that is where the Hell Creek herbivores would be. We only have Edmontosaurus uh, and Ectans. Uh, at the moment. So uh, there's an elevator for our challenge guests and to the right there's the staff entry to their area beneath this viewing platform. So up on the platform we got a Tyrannosaur out the window um, and uh, they can't actually get to the glass. There's a concrete standoff to uh, keep them from getting close enough to punch through the grass and pick up a snack from among the guests. Uh, so uh, I think, yeah, yeah, there's the concrete. So I'm going to push through the glass at this point, take us into the exhibit, because we're getting a lot of noise and it's not coming from that Tyrannosaur. Yeah, I hear him or her. The non-dimorphic skin makes it a little harder to tell. Not seeing them though. Where are you? Oh, here you come. Um, you must have been hanging up in, you know, hanging out in the shelter. You can see the tarp just beyond the Tyrannosaur there, and there's bedding material for them. There. Yes, they're loud beasts too. <laughs> A lot of these dinosaurs are. Are you going to lay down? I guess the Tyrannosaurs are tight. Oh, that one got up. So he's marched over, but he is not going to the viewpoint. We will. This is our Tyrannosaur enrichment point, where it will be able to look over the herbivore enclosure. The wild field there eventually to be uh, filled in. But let's go elevated and give you a sense of the park's uh, expanse and uh, maybe a better idea of how it's laid out. Uh, this is the Hadrosaur country and you can see the connection on the bridges and the river. The river flows past it um, and down into um, the Ceratopsian area and that's our uh, facilities area with the genetics lab and the veterinarian facility with the helipad on top. And the, the 
workshops and storage areas uh, for uh, keeping the park running. In the Jurassic area on the right and the Triassic on the left. And our entry plaza, both upper and lower. So coming to the end of another Alpha Park. And so we're gonna work on our way out. If you wanna go up the stairs and stop at T-Rex Cafe and get a bite on the way out, feel free to do so. I'm going to head for the exit because it's about time to sign off. Thanks for stopping by to visit uh, my prehistoric kingdom, and I hope you will uh, continue to visit. That's all for now. Bye, folks.